This is Larry Van Nuys at Broadcast Control in LaPorna. We have brought our remote unit here for the first flight of the new DC-10 wide-body jet. To help us cover the event, we have other reporters strategically located. Now over to you, Mike. We're speaking to you from the Long Beach Airport Tower. This is Michael Rye, and from our vantage point, we will be bringing you reports of the important moments as they occur. Now we'll switch you over to camera number three. This is Art Ballinger standing by at Edwards Air Force Base. This is Kurt Sanders. I'll be reporting to you from the camera chase plane. <laughs> The first of the wide-bodied tri-jet airliners, the McDonnell Douglas DC-10, is scheduled to take off on its initial test flight at 10 a.m. today. Just a short distance away on the flight ramp, final preparations are underway. When veteran test pilot Cliff Stout and his crew take off in the DC-10, it will be a visual representation of an investment of more than $1 billion of private capital by the McDonnell Douglas Corporation. The success of this flight will be of major interest to the 100,000 workers whose future depends on the skilled hands of test pilot Cliff Stout. Manufacture of the DC-10 is a nationwide and even international effort. Final assembly of the DC-10 will take place here in Long Beach. The nose is made in Santa Monica, California. The wings are designed in St. Louis and are being built in Canada. The General Electric engines are made in Ohio. The fuselage is built at General Dynamics in San Diego. Parts are being made in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and overseas in Japan and Italy. While we're waiting, come in, Michael Rye, with some background information. In just a few minutes now, the DC-10 will take to the sky. But prior to any first flight, it's customary to roll the plane out to present it to the public for the first time. This is the debut of the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 first of the wide-bodied tri-jet transport aircraft. The honored guests are an impressive group of dignitaries, including Vice President Agnew and Governor Ronald Reagan. James McDonald started the ceremony with a brief speech and introduced the distinguished guests. Assisted by James McDonald and Donald Douglas, Vice President Agnew pushed the symbolic throttles forward. This gesture was the cue for the DC-10 to make its initial public appearance. For the first time in the annals of aviation rollout, a commercial transport taxied under its own power to a spot before the reviewing stand. This is the first of hundreds of DC-10s. Twelve airlines have already ordered or optioned well over 200 of these sleek, multi-range liners. The rollout is behind us. Now we take you to Art Ballinger at Edwards Air Force Base. The DC-10 will be powered by General Electric or Pratt & Whitney engines. This first DC-10 will fly with engines built by GE. So let's talk about them for a moment. This is the CF-6 high bypass engine designed for the DC-10 Series 10 aircraft. GE turned on 13 seven-foot fans to try and blow out its newest commercial jet engine. But the engine won every time. Tests were conducted right here at Edwards Air Force Base with the CF-6 mounted on the wing of a B-52. The CF-6 has operated at speeds of Mach 0.869 and to altitudes of 45,000 feet. Air start capabilities have been demonstrated at altitudes up to 35,000 feet. Throughout the entire test program, the CF-6 has operated virtually smoke-free. I have just talked with John Brizenstein, the Vice President and General Manager of the DC-10 program. John told me this DC-10 Series 10 that will fly today is the first of a family of DC-10s. The Series 10 designed for service on routes of 300 to 4,400 statute miles is powered by General Electric 40,000 pound thrust engines. The Series 30 and 40 are both intercontinental versions. They have a 6,000 mile range. One is powered by a General Electric engine with increased thrust, the other by Pratt & Whitney engines. The fourth member of the DC-10 family is a convertible passenger cargo transport. It can be changed from all passenger to all cargo in 10 hours or less, and John Bresendine says more members of the DC-10 family are possible. Our cameras are now showing you scenes of the DC-10 passenger cabin mock-up. It is almost 20 feet wide with an eight-foot high ceiling. Three pairs of wide lounging chairs are in each row of the forward first-class sections. 
Two aisles run the length of the cabin, which is separated into three room-like sections with four pairs of seats across in the coach section. No passenger is more than one seat from the aisle. The DC-10 provides passengers with large windows. Closed compartments above the window provide storage space for personal carry-on baggage. Airlines have the option of using a lower deck galley system. The food is prepared below deck and sent up to the cabin stewardesses for service to the passengers. This is Larry Van Eyes, and I've been talking to Bob Hayes vice president in charge of engineering, and he's been telling me that their computer tests have already proven that the DC-10 will fly beautifully, as we will see in just a few minutes. We have re just, just received word we must switch you not onto the flight line. The flight crew is now aboard, and the plane is ready to roll out for the takeoff. It will take just a few minutes for the DC-10 to arrive at the end of the runway. Meanwhile, let's hear from Michael Rye in the tower. This is Douglas Aircraft's chief pilot, Jaime Heimerdinger. He and Cliff Stout, the project pilot, helped design the DC-10 cockpit. Jaime, what were your main design objectives? Our main uh, design objectives were to have a real spacious cockpit for comfort of the crew. We also designed in it uh, simplicity because we knew we were going to design an airplane that would be taking uh, passengers safely into uh, weather conditions that can be zero zero and we have uh, also incorporated uh, visibility that we think is best in any transport airplane that will be flying in, a, in the next century. Thank you Michael and Jaime Heimerdinger. I'm sorry to cut in but the pilot has just called the tower for takeoff clearance. Let's listen for the answer from the tower. Tago 10 Long Beach Tower, runway 12, cleared for takeoff. At exactly 10 a.m., the time scheduled several weeks ago, the DC-10 is rolling. Some 20,000 people are watching this take off from every available vantage point. The DC-10 is picking up speed and will roll some 5,000 feet and lift off at 152 knots. There is no visible smoke and a very low noise level. He has lifted off just short of 5,000 feet. And we have reports from the side of the runway that it was a very quiet takeoff. And now let's join our camera chase plane and see the DC-10 in flight for the first time. Come in, Kurt Sanders. From the camera chase plane, this is Kurt Sanders reporting. Our job is to describe the DC-10 during its first flight, but as you can see, things are going so smoothly that we've decided to let the 10 speak for itself, as it's doing right now quite eloquently. Kurt, this is Larry Van Eyes, and I'm now in the Data Control Center with Larry Burrell, and we're receiving considerable information on the progress of the flight. After the DC-10 took off, it flew out over Catalina, where the pilot, Cliff Stout, cycled the landing gear in flaps. The aircraft stayed at 10,000 feet for several other tests and headed inland. From the smiles on the faces of the technicians here, I would say everything is going very well. Kurt, we're going to switch back now to Larry Burrell. We're now back in the Data Control Center. Flight test information is relayed here. Well, let's go to the source and talk to George Jansen. Hi, George. Hi, how are you? Can you tell me what's going on here? Yes, we're in communication with the DC-10 during flight, and we are also monitoring some selected parameters in real-time and engineering units on the cathode ray tube. This is accomplished by a TM link telemetering from the airplane to a station on Frost Peak and then a microwave link down to the data center. Frost Peak is located about 75 miles northeast of Long Beach. Now, can you measure other parameters? Yes, we can. We can call up uh, any of several hundred selected parameters and display them on the tube. Now, what are the advantages of such a system? Well, there are several advantages. One being that we can monitor the airplane in engineering units in real time during the course of a test flight. And probably more important, we can have that data available when the crew lands the airplane so that we can intelligently discuss the results of the flight. Thank you very much, George. The DC-10 is now flying at 20,000 feet, so let's take another look from our chase plane. Larry, I thought you might like to know that we've been monitoring Cliff Stout and to quote him exactly, he says, the DC-10 maneuvers like a fighter with the grace of a swan. 
Art Ballinger here at Edwards Air Force Base, and in just a few moments, the DC-10, the newest addition to the DC family of aircraft, will be landing on this runway right behind me here. After all these months, there is a beautiful airplane coming down to land, and from where I stand, it looks to me like it's going to be a perfect landing. It's a gorgeous plane. Smooth, as I say, a perfect landing. And now, in just a few moments, we'll watch that plane taxi in. We're going to try and have you uh, talk to Cliff Stout, our test pilot, the first man to fly the DC-10. How are you, Cliff? I just want to ask you how to go. Oh, beautiful. Everything went according to plan. It's a beautiful airplane, best airplane I've ever flown. Must have been a real thrill for you. Oh, it really was. Thrill of my life. Landing smooth? Very good, very good. Take off? Beautiful. Nothing wrong at all? Nothing wrong at all. It's a beautiful bird. They can fuel up and go again right now. Thank you very much, Cliff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cliff Stout, the first man to fly the DC-10. Standing with me here is Mr. Jackson McGowan, president of Douglas Aircraft Corporation. And I'd like to ask you, Jack, your reactions on this first successful flight of your DC-10. Well, I've been listening to the uh, radio all the way for three hours and 25 minutes. And uh, everything I've heard is great. We'll have our debriefing in a few minutes. But uh, the pilots say it's uh, the best airplane they've ever flown. Well, that's what uh, I've understood, and I, just to look at it, I'd have to believe it was the most beautiful plane I've ever seen. It's a great uh, machine, and uh, we hope it's as good as we started out to design several years ago. Well, I wish you nothing but success in the future, Mr. McGowan, and it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. And congratulations. Thank you. Right. Oh, that was a great job. <laughs> well, to the surprise of absolutely no one, the DC-10 has successfully completed first flight. That's it from Edwards Air Force Base. We return you now to Data Control Center in Long Beach. With this flight, a new era of passenger comfort is now possible for the general public. The DC-10 is an advanced technology commercial transport, wide-body luxury jet, multi-range and high-performance jumbo jet. Officials here believe the DC-10 will become the backbone of commercial air fleets during the 1970s and beyond. From this point on, air travel will be safer, more comfortable, and generally better for all of us. This is Larry Van Eyes returning you to our studio.